everyone, I'm Shannon Kantner and welcome to a special CMSD TV news program featuring everything you need to know about parent-teacher conferences. I'm sitting down with CMSD parents and district experts to tell you why parent-teacher conferences are so important and how you can get the most out of the experience. Today I'm joined by Mr. King, a father to nine CMSD students. He is very involved in his children's schools. I know you're an SPO president. So first let's just talk about more of your children and where they go to school. Uh, I have uh, six of them go to Joseph Gallagher on the west side and then I have one in Lincoln West. I have one at Max Hayes and I also have one that goes to the Studio of Arts or School of Arts. One of those schools. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of really neat school options, yes, so yes. that's excellent. A little bit of everything all across the district. Yes. Great. Everywhere. All right, so first just talk about why parent-teacher conferences are so important. Oh, so it, it just gives you all the information that you can't always just walk into class day by day to find out how your, ch your kid is actually doing. Or like uh, if you have a certain concern, you can actually sit down and talk to the teacher and not be disturbed or be interrupted, you know, or interrupting their, their schedule during the school day. So right. it's, it's very important, very important. And how do you prepare for parent-teacher conferences, maybe as an SPO president first, and then just as a parent, I'm sure you have different strategies for each child, each school. How does that work? I try to split it up with my wife <laughs> <laughs> because I have certain ones in high school and I got a lot in, in uh, middle school. So it helps me to prepare for their conferences one day and then have to know that I can go the next day to take care of the older ones. Uh, as far as SPO, I, I just help as any way I can. I mean, paperwork or distributing papers, uh, flyers going out, making sure parents know that we're having conferences. Uh, yeah, things like that. And as a parent, do you talk to your student in, in advance of the conference to see sort of what you should talk about? Do you? Oh, I mean, Any, anything like I'm that? always involved, so I can't really speak for anyone else, but I'm sure there's parents out there that, like, uh, have a very busy work schedule and might not always be able to speak to your child. So, like, they might want to sit down and say, hey, what do I expect when I go talk to your teacher? What are we looking at? Is there anything you might need help with? And then when you go to the school, you can ask the teacher the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. And I bet this whole concept might just make people a little nervous, especially if it's their first time going oh, to a parent-teacher yeah. conference. So what can people, what can parents expect when they actually get there? Maybe the setup, uh, the format, any anything you can offer. First thing and foremost, they, the greetings is beautiful. Everyone greets everybody. Everybody says hello, welcome to the school, um, and then you sign in. Once you sign in, then you get direction of where you need to go. If you're lost, I'm sure someone's walking the halls to help you. Um, yeah, it, it's just a really nice environment. It, it, it actually helps a lot to come in on a teacher parent teacher conference, so that way you can sit down with the teacher one on one. Do you know roughly how much time you're able to spend with your teacher? Does it just depend? Uh, it depends on the child. It depends on the child's need. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you need a little more time, the teacher will give it to you. All right. What can parents do to take full advantage of that time that they get with the teacher? What, what, what show kind of up. advice? Yeah. You got to show up in order to take any time or any advantage of anything. You can't get knowledge if you don't show up. Mm -hmm. And once they do show up, then any recommendations, can. then what? Once you show up, just take all the knowledge you can and, and make sure you apply it because if you apply it, it will work in the end. Mm -hmm. I applied a lot in the last three years. I've been with CMSD and uh, it, it actually works out. My daughter's going to college next year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud. Are there maybe just like two questions that any parent could ask out there, no matter the child, the situation, the school, just something that they can definitely come prepared with that you would recommend? Uh, I would say the, the main goal is grades, of course. Mm -hmm. Always ask about the grades. And then the second question I would ask, as me, if it was me, is the behavior. Mm. How does he act in class? How does she act in class? How does she act in the hallways? Does she go to the restroom and come right back, or does she sit in the restroom for a long time? That's, that's good stuff. An experienced parent here. You know exactly <laughs> what to ask. That's good. Um, have you gotten, through these questions, have you ever gotten surprising news, good oh. or bad, and then how did you handle it? Wow. I actually cried one time. Oh. It was kind of sweet. <laughs> um, my daughter, I came to school with. I come to find out she was like, she was valid Victorian or something like mm -hmm. that. And then she has the highest GPA in the whole school. Wow. So when I heard that, I like, it may, I look a melt now. <laughs> but yes, that's, that was, that was beautiful. That's huge. Yeah. So surprising, very good news, the, oh, the yeah. best news, really. Right. Definitely. That's great. That's awesome. You um, made me choke on camera. So oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, Mr. King. <laughs> well, this is good. This is a wonderful example of what parent-teacher conferences can do, though. I mean, right. that's a memory you'll not, you'll always have. Always. Yeah. Forever. Wow. That's great. Well, I'm sorry to make you cry on it's camera, right. but it's worth it for yes. the other parents out there. <laughs> um, Edit that. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we're going to keep it. <laughs> so obviously, we've just talked about a wonderful memory that you've had after conferences. What can you do after the conference to use what you've learned? Uh, well, you can definitely, um, what I do, what I did is I got more involved. Because after I found out that it's okay to come into school and actually walk through the, or sit in the classroom and sit with my child or even go in and go have lunch. You know, you can come in and buy your own lunch. They, I mean, teachers don't have a problem with it. Principal doesn't have a problem with it. They actually want you to do that. So if you come to the conference and you get that, that good feeling of knowing that you're in a good environment, that's, that's the best thing I can say about teacher parents conferences. So just get more involved. Don't get wait for the involved. next conference. Don't wait for the next one. Get more involved. I like it. That's pretty good advice to end on, but any other advice that you would want to give parents out there in preparation for conferences or in general? Just know what your child's doing in school and stay involved. You know, that's, that's the main goal right now as mm -hmm. far as being a parent. You got to make sure you know what your child's doing. You don't always wait to hear what the child's doing. Go see what your child's doing. That's perfect advice. Thank you so much, Mr. King, for being well, here and joining us. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Well, we actually had the chance to talk with more parents about their children in parent-teacher conferences. Let's check that out. My oldest daughter's freshman year at Facing History New Tech. Um, we took her to a parent-teacher conference, and as they were telling us the positive about her and how her grades were, um, they also turned to her and said, well, my, you know, how can we help you to achieve your goals? Like, where is your weakness? And that surprised me, like, wow. They took an initiative to see what she's struggling in and what she needs help on. I think you need to write down your questions. If you have any questions, go in there totally prepared with um, information that you can probably gather from the internet or from your own child so you can go in there prepared. I would say from the teacher's point of view to have their grades ready, be prepared with possibly a sheet that goes over behavior, academics, again, strengths and weaknesses, so that when you come to the table with a parent, you are well prepared. Test scores, any type of data that can help um, provide information to the parents about how their child is doing in school. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid. You know, if you feel like you need more time, ask for more time, if at another date. And, um, and always to let your teachers know that you are willing to be there for your child in their education. I either go to the CMSD website or to see if there's any resources available or I just Google in general to see what's out there to try to find resources and say for instance if there is something that my child needs assistance with. Parents can also offer suggestions as to how to advance their children themselves because they know their children better than us and how they have performed in the last X amount of years before they got to the teacher so maybe offer suggestions to the teacher that works best with their children and their child and so that again we are a partnership. It's just open communication. If you know you cannot make it, make an appointment with the school to set up an appointment for a date you're able to. Your children are with us six and a half hours a day. It's a long time and we do need to have a partnership with the parents. It's not just me, it's not just them, but it's the two of us continuing to grow that child. I think the education on your children is a teamwork effort. So if you can create a relationship with your teacher early on, then you're able to um, assist your child in, in achieving the goals for it for that particular academic year. Now parent-teacher conferences can be short. Our time is very limited from 12.30 to 7. I can't fit in all of the students. So if we are cut short, they can arrange another time to sit down with the teachers and have ample amount of time to discuss their children. So I don't want them to feel rushed even though we are under time constraints. Great advice from our parents. Now we'll hear from our principals and see them in action at parent-teacher conferences. I went to a few schools last year to learn more about parent turnout. Let's take a look. We had parents lined up outside our door. It started at 12.30. Some parents came in at, at, as early as noon. And they remained busy right up until 7 p.m. when conferences ended. A steady stream of parents picking up report cards and learning about their students' progress. I feel connected to the school and engaged because, you know, me being a parent, uh, right now I'm in school, so, and school's like really taking up all of my time. 
So when I do get the chance to go out and, you know, see what's going on with my kids, especially in school, it's just, it's a wonderful thing, you know. It allows us to foster that communication that we all need with parents. We can't do this without parents. Parents spoke one-on-one -on -one with teachers and learned about the junior year capstone project to give students a head start. Schools across the district found unique ways like that to encourage parent participation in conferences. Under the Cleveland plan, all parents or caregivers are required to have face-to-face -face contact with their children's schools each year. Principals take that seriously. The number had reached about 75 percent by the end of the first semester. We love to make parents feel welcome and at home here at Mooney. Uh, we provide uh, refreshments. Um, we have activities and things set up so that if there's little ones around that uh, need an activity to do, we kind of try to set that up for the convenience of the parents so that there's clear communication between the educator and the parent on their child's progress. And that's very important for moms like Isabel Zaldana with a daughter in pre-K and her son in fourth grade special education. My communication with his teacher is huge because I work, you know, full time. I can't volunteer and be here, but when there's open house or any chance to talk to the teachers, I'm here. And many parents feel the same way. Mooney stayed busy throughout the afternoon. We're doing pretty good. Parents are coming in and out and uh, leaving with smiles. So we're very proud about what we're doing here. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, Jillian. Bye, Victoria. Victoria, say bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. We've heard from parents and principals, and now we're going to speak with CMSD's Executive Director of the Department of Family and Community Engagement. I'm joined by Tracy Hill. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So the district is very focused on parent involvement. Why are parent-teacher conferences so important? Well, primarily because um, education is a partnership between schools, parents, community, and the teachers. And um, parents and teachers need to have an ongoing conversation, dialogue, about how a student is progressing, about their, the data, about their achievement, about what parents can do at home to assist their child. And, and when we see that, research has shown us that when parents and teachers have a strong partnerships, uh, then students do better. They have higher graduation rates, better behavior, and better attendance to school. So it's about more than just seeing the report card. Right. And you can do so much more just within that time at a conference. Exactly. So how can parents prepare for them to take in full advantage of these conferences? Well, I would say um, I would recommend that parents uh, schedule a conference, first of all. Um, secondly, to make a list of questions that they might have to, to ask the, the teacher about, you know, where's my child at um, in terms of their reading and, lit, uh, reading and math and other subjects as well. Um, where should they be? Um, what are they learning right now? Um, how can I help my child at home? Um, and what resources might be available in the community that I can also take advantage of? And of course, parent-teacher conferences aren't just about the parents. The mm -hmm. other half here is the teacher. Mm -hmm. So what can teachers do to prepare and questions like that for them? Right. Well, as a former teacher, um, and I, I, I taught children with special needs, one of the things that I made sure to do was to always start with something positive. You know, um, really looking at, uh, you know, what does this child do well? What are they, wh where are their strengths? So that then it was easier to talk about um, if there were problems or issues that I needed to address. So I would always say, starting off that conversation with what's going good, um, and then always closing the conversation perhaps with, and where, would, where can we as a team um, help your child? How can we help them to achieve the goals? From the teacher's perspective, how do you kind of deliver that constructive criticism? Do you have any tips for that? And then from the parent side, how do you kind of handle that and digest it? Well, again, I think that it's more of starting with what is going well. And that can lead you into that conversation of, well, I have this concern about um, reading. Um, I'm seeing that the, your child is having some difficulty with fluency. Um, and then having some recommendations or some ac activities or, 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 or things that it, they can practice at home. So if there is a need or a deficit or a child is having a str struggling with a, a certain area in the curriculum, um, making sure that you have a solution um, and, and, and help the parent to understand what they can do. You know, oftentimes we give parents laundry list of, of activities that they can do at home, but maybe just picking that one area that's going to like release all the logs in the log jam. 
Okay. I know last year the district ha offered extended hours mm -hmm. for conferences across the district. How did that help with parent turnout and what are we expecting this year? Well, I think um, we just make them make the conferences at times where parents can, can come to them. Um, contrary to popular belief, we do have a lot of parents in our district who are working and sometimes working two jobs and different shifts. So um, creating um, a time where they can come in from like 12 to 7, that really uh, gives them the opportunity to come in um, if they're working. And, and have access to their teachers for those conferences. And do you think that helped? Last I think year? it definitely helped. Mm -hmm. um, we've been tracking this data, the data of, on our parent teacher conferences, for the last two years. Um, in 2013 14, the district had a 73% attendance rate of parents to parent teacher conferences, which is quite impressive. Yeah. Um, and then last year, when we changed the hours of our parent teacher conferences, we actually had a 7% gain. So we're Last year, 2014-15, we had 80% of our parents coming to schools for their conferences. That is fantastic. Yeah. When, when parents come, just give me a general idea, what can they expect? You know, maybe a new parent to the district or haven't attended a parent-teacher conference before or it's a new school. Just, you know, run through kind of that format and what they'll see and what they'll experience. Well, for the first conferences that we have this year, they actually will be receiving their students' report card. So they'll probably review that report card. Um, many of our teachers do keep data folders on the students, so they should see samples of the students' work. Um, again, um, talking about where the child is, is doing well, but they also might hear if there are any issues um, in terms of, you know, if they're struggling on a, a certain topic area, if there are any uh, social, emotional issues that uh, might be arising, and they might also have a, a conversation about attendance, because we know that students who miss a lot of school um, are not going to perform as good as their peers who are coming to school on a regular basis. So that emphasis on attendance, daily attendance. So how can parents and teachers use what they've learned in the conference after it throughout the school year? Yeah. Well, for parents, I think, uh, again, coming out of that conference, understanding uh, where your student is in terms of achievement. Um, and helping your student having a conversation perhaps when you get home and saying, well, I heard these really great things about you, but these are some areas we need to focus on. Um, making sure that uh, parents might receive um, access to an online grade book so they can check that grade book on a daily basis and find out, you know, if their students are completing assignments. But also, um, you know, having that dialogue with their child and just encouraging them and, and talking about the value of education and supporting them at home by making sure that they have a place to do their homework and that they're reading every day. In terms of our teachers, Teachers, you know, this is a two-way uh, conversation with a parent who is a partner in education. Um, um, coming out of a conference, they might learn something about what's going on in that children's life. Maybe there's a new baby in the household. Maybe there was a death in the family. You know, maybe the, the, they're experiencing some struggles. But they also might find out from the parents what, what are the child's strengths in terms of the things that they like to do, what are some of the reinforcers, or, so that they can maybe incentivize behaviors or completion of assignments. So again, in this two-way conversation, they're they're both learning about each other, and, and that should strengthen the partnership as, as the year progresses. They can cover a lot of ground, even oh, in that short conference, yeah. obviously. So what last tips or advice do you have for both parents and teachers to just make the most out of that conference and that experience? I think the, the advice I would give to both our educators and our parents is that this is a partnership. It's like a marriage, right? Um, and that's why we call it family engagement, because when you get engaged, you're going to marry someone. <laughs> so to just um, to come into it, uh, uh, without any preconceived notions, um, uh, mutual respect, um, and realizing that this partnership or this marriage this, uh, of, of, of these two during the school year is going to be a, a long-lasting relationship and that we always have to think about our scholars first in terms of how we're going to help them do their best. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Such wonderful advice. Everyone should feel at ease and prepared yeah. for their conferences now. So thank you. Interim parent-teacher conferences will be held on February 18th and 19th. Make sure to check with your child's school for specific dates and times.